Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Welcome to Terakota University Talk Series. I'm Prabowo Setiadi from Jatiwangi Art Factory. Terakota University is a long-term project of Jatiwangi Art Factory, based in Indonesia. Based in Indonesia, the talk series are a part of course in collaboration with the Institute of Art Education of the Zurich. University of the Art and Foa Flux. Our speakers today is Alexi Hars, is the founder and director of the Confident Foundations. Since 2010, he has been a member of Jakarta Art Council and has served as chairman of the film committee. In 2012, with the Confident Foundation, he participated in the restoration of the Indonesian classic film, Lewat Jam Malam by Usmar Ismail, in collaboration with the National Museum of Singapore. Currently, he is a special staff of the Ministry of Education and Culture of the Republic of Indonesia. The presentation will showing the context of state management of culture in Indonesia, the position of states the aim of advancement of culture and he and the perspective in utilization of object of advancement of culture in Indonesia. Cultural economy is one aspect included in utilization of culture. Please, Mas Alex Sihar, to start it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Prabowo. Uh, thank you all the participants. Uh, good afternoon there in Europe and good evening for the uh, participants coming from Indonesia. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Alex. Uh, people call me Alex Ihar. I'm the special staff for the Director General of Culture under the Ministry of Education and Culture. Uh, it's supposed to be not me who's going to the presentation. It's supposed to be the director general, but the director general is not feeling well uh, for the last two days. So, uh, Jaf, uh, Jatiwahi Art Factory asked me to replace him. But I know you have big uh, uh, the projection on on this cultural economy perspective but <clears throat> let me uh, start the presentation let me start the discussion today from the context of indonesian uh, law according uh, around the the management of culture uh, i ask permission to share my screen Okay. Wait a second. Suppose, yeah. Okay. Uh, is it everybody can see this? The presentation? Is it okay? Yes, looks fine. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, back in 2017, late, uh, the last, no, no, the first part of 2017. Indonesia has new law. It's called the law number five, 2017, called the, for the advancement of culture. So what is advancement of culture? So it's, as a law, it's have a long uh, history. The draft of this bill is presented in the Indonesian parliament back in 1985. So as the draft, the, the draft of law, it's been discussed for the last 30 years in Indonesia. Uh, it's quite a uh, struggle to manage to get it because uh, many, many perspectives come to, to the parliament and culture is something that you cannot be 
boxed in law. Culture is something to be dynamic and and live happily, free without any any connection with the law. So, what is how how can the law include in management of the culture? That's the point. Not the culture itself to be uh, to be boxed inside of a uh, law, but how the state. Uh, how's the state position in managing the all the very uh, big numbers of Indonesian culture or cultures that live in Indonesia to flourish and develop and be utilized by everybody. So uh, the advancement of culture as a law is quite uh, distinct, differently from other law. Uh, and it giving position to the state to be a facilitator rather than executors. Uh, in this law, uh, it defined that culture is anything pertaining to human creation, sensibility, motivation, and the work of the community. So uh, by the law, culture is owned by the community not the state, not uh, any other institutions. It's so owned by community, that's the first thing. And the law itself, <clears throat> divine national culture, is the, as a concept is quite uh, amazing for you, I can understand. National culture is the overall processes and results of the intercultural interaction, living and developing in Indonesia. So this state, the, the, the article said that all the processes and result of interaction between culture. So all the cultures that live in Indonesia, we have very wide, wide variety of cultures, is considered as a national culture. And to manage that kind of culture, the, 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 the concept is the advancement of culture. Is to avoid, is the effort to improve cultural resilience. First, the cultural resilience and Indonesian cultural contribution to the development of world civilization. So that too is the big aim of the advancement of culture. First, the aim to improve cultural resilience and Indonesian cultural contribution to the development of world civilization. Through cultural protection, cultural development, cultural utilization, and capacity building or empowerment. So that's the, the, the framework, the basic framework of the law. And what is the government position in this? In advancement of, uh, in, in, in advancement of culture, the government has the duties to vitalize and maintain sustainable cultural ecosystem. Okay, we can talk. Uh, after this about what is sustainable cultural uh, ecosystem. But the position of the government itself, the main duty is to vitalize and maintain sustainable cultural ecosystem. Next. So what is the object? If the government is the subject of the law, what is the object of the law? The object of advancement of culture are this, this 10 uh, big uh, not categorization, but uh, uh, 10 big prints, oral traditions, manuscripts, customaries, or what we call it in Indonesia, adat istiadat, rites or rituals, uh, traditional knowledge, traditional technology, arts, languages, folk games, and traditional sports. So, why this time? Why not others? Why not film? Why not uh, any kind of aspect out, uh, other than this time? Because what in the series of uh, all the panorama of Indonesian law, this 10 objects is not there in the inside any law. If film, film has its own law, the uh, 
heritage sites, they have their own law, but this tent is not managed yet inside the uh, inside the laws or in Indonesia. That's why they pick this ten uh, this ten objects, oral tradition, manuscripts, customaries, rights, traditional knowledge, traditional technology, arts, languages, folk games, and traditional sports. And when it when we try to count how many is it is very very much uh, hard to tell because uh, up till now our uh, inventorization is still growing and it's got more and more from what around 127,000 uh, objects include in this in these 10 categories Next, what is government duties then? When we're talking about uh, sustaining uh, the, the ecosystem. First, what the government should do is to protect. Is to protect. And if the object of the advancement of culture is protected already or in the mean of the protection, it can be developed. It's supposed to be developed. And then, if it's developed enough, the and so we cannot see culture as the death object in Indonesia. It's not artifact, but something that grows, something that uh, uh, sustainably developed through time and through civilization, through uh, uh, interconnection between other culture, and then after the development. It's supposed to be utilized and to support the three uh, main thing that the government is supposed to manage is how to empower okay so the sacred triangle is like this protection development utilization and empowerment in the middle so because of that, the government to work not only in one, uh, in one ministerial level, but supposed to work inter-ministries and inter-governmental institution. In the protection, we have the archaeology uh, experts, we have the uh, national library, we have the foreign minister, we also have the uh, Ministry of uh, Ministry of Education and Culture, National Museum, and of course the Ministry of Forestry. And uh, apa bahasanya wo? KLHK. Gimana mas? KLHK tuh bahasa Inggrisnya apa ya? KLHK. Kementerian Lingkungan, Lingkungan Hidup. Hidup. Dan oke. Okay. And then. Bentar, in the development side, uh, in the development process, the government institution that's supposed to work side by side is the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Research and uh, High Education, uh, the archaeological, the national national research body, the national galleries, and the Ministry of Creative Economy. And then in the utilization, of course, the Ministry and of uh, uh, Creative Economy, and then the Ministry of Tourism, and the Ministry of Industrial and uh, Trades, and also, and also the one big thing is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So, all the the works is shared between ministerial level and institutional inside the government itself and for the empowerment is the the duty has been uh, supposed to be done by the ministry of education and ministry of research how to finance the advancement of culture <coughs> 
so this is uh, the the triangle is supposed to be like this. The state budget is going to be big on the protection side, and the private or our community based uh, budget is supposed to be heavy on the utilization side. So the protection, of course, both of the financing system, the state financing or or the non-state uh, financing supposed to work side by side. But the, the perspective is kind of bigger on the left side for the protection in the state budget, I mean. And for the utilization, it's smaller and smaller the state budget is going to be uh, used inside inside the 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 utilization of the cult of uh, advancement of culture. So this is the economy works in the utilization because the the this is all the business model are gonna run in this part. And for the empowerment is supposed to get the state budget and the non-state budget yeah, almost in the same almost in the same uh, amount. That's the the illustration of how the financing can be done. What is protection? Back in before, sorry. Protection, development, and utilization. What is how to? What is the government duty in protection? Okay, sorry. Uh, just a minute. Protection is the effort to preserve the sustainability of culture through inventorization, safeguarding, sustentation, salvage, and publication. So the government is supposed to uh, coordinate with all the stakeholders of the uh, cultural, uh, uh, the culture, the stakeholders of culture, the, uh, the persons of the institutional based on the community level to inventorize, to safeguard, to sustain and salvage and publication. The aim of the, of the protection is the effort to preserve the sustainability of culture. So the, to preserve the sustainability of culture, is done by this five uh, thing that works side by side: inventorization, self-guarding, sustentation, and salvage and publication. And then, in development, what the governments should uh, facilitate is to propagate, to establish a lot of research, and in enriching the diversity. So development is very important in the step of uh, advancement of culture. In this step, uh, the interrelation, interconnection within the diversity of Indonesian cultures is aimed to create more and more diverse. That's the aim of the the development process. Is it done by, is it gonna be done by the government? No. The government will facilitate what will happen or what happening the, in, the, in, in the communities. The third step is utilization. Utilization is the effort to use Utilization is the effort to use the object of advancement of culture to strengthen national ideology, politics, economy, social life, culture, defense, and security in achieving the national goals. Okay, I can say it one more time. Utilization is the effort to use objects of advancement of culture to strengthen national ideology, politics, economy, social life, culture, 
defense and security in achieving the national goals. So uh, it's going got to be done through uh, in in the big aim on improving general welfare and then increasing the active role of and influence of Indonesia in international relations. Improving cultural resilience and building national identity. So this four aim of utilization is the main road in creating better uh, or ad more advanced culture. To improve general welfare, it means economy and happiness, increasing the active role of and influence of Indonesia in international relations. So contributing is about contributing to the international or world uh, civilization. Improving cultural resilience of its culture and building national identity of uh, the multiculturalism. That's the big aim of utilization. In empowerment, Government supposed to empower human resources of culture, artists, artisans, academics, uh, and all the the human resource that include in the ecosystem of culture, and all the cultural institutions uh, owned by the government or owned by the by the private or communities. To be empowered by help, empowered by the government, not help to to empower them by the cultural institution. Uh, back to cultural economy. In the context of the advancement of culture, cultural economy runs in the context of utilization and works in the frameworks of sustainable ecosystem on each object. This thing is very important about creating sustainable ecosystem on each object. So it's not going to be, we're not going to have a quite generic uh, conducts on how it works sustainable ecosystem because each object of, uh, each object of the advancement of culture having its own uh, ecosystem that needs to be analyzed and uh, to to understand how to create the mapping of its uh, cultural ecosystem. I mean, okay, I can back to this. Uh, this is batik. I wear batik. When I say batik as a part of the object of a culture, it's uh, customaries. Batik as customaries, and when, when uh, what's the meaning of its symbol in here? Uh, how it made is the tra traditional like, uh, knowledge, uh, the utilities used in the in the making batik is the part of tra traditional technology, and the pattern itself. Well, I'm sorry if you cannot see it. Is the is the part of the arts, so the visual arts. I mean. So how can we map the how can we map the ecosystem of batik? Then? First, we have to understand who creates batik. I mean, at the moment, who creates batik? The factory, the ibu ibu, the all the masters, yet uh, creating bat batik by by hands. And how to get how to uh, the the uh, how the trades going between the maker of the batik and the user of the batik. And when we talk about the batik itself, the wax that needed to use it is it coming from Indonesia? Is it coming from somewhere in Indonesia, or is it imported coming from 
other countries the wax the color uh, the color the 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 fabrics or the ecosystem of the fabrics when so when we talk about batik as part of the culture it's having a lot of business model and business process uh, that works inside the ecosystem of batik for each object we should analyze when where, where the weak spot and how to uh, create better better environment for that weak spot so that the whole ecosystem can work side by side and keep growing and hope to be sustainable in article 34 it stated that the utilization of objects may be implemented through the processing of objects of advanced or culture into products the products means not only objects in uh, in tangible manner but also in intangible manner uh, knowledge is also a product uh, ip intellectual properties are also product but is conducted while while upholding the noble values and wisdom of the object itself so the concept of acknowledgement of each culture is needed to get through the utilization uh, and having the economic impact so what if we if we pushing this uh, agenda upholding the noble values of and wisdom we can develop the object of the uh, advancement of culture to be more and more because based on the prior knowledge or prior uh, prior data about it so this is quite important important uh, for us to to conduct uh, to develop and uh, to utilize each uh, product that coming from the object of advancement of culture and also important in this law is article 37 that if because everybody can use it but uh, can utilize the, the the object of culture of indonesia but the the law stated that for uh, exclusive for the major industry and foreign party to must meet the following requirements because it's not coming from the the local land itself is supposed to having the approval based on informed consent from the stakeholder of the object and having a benefits the benefits sharing scheme to the to the ecosystem and acknowledging the origin of object of advanced culture acknowledgement and for that because the license coming from the culture uh, from the minister uh, for the from the minister of education and culture the minister of education and culture is supposed to use the shared benefits as referred to the section one to vitalize and sustain ecosystem related to object of advancement of culture so the main the main uh, part of each objects is to map its own ecosystem to see the link between one factor to another factor to another factor and how how is it done by the public how is it developed by the public how is it uh, uh, spread or uh, distributed to the user of the objects and how it can improve life because the scheme is to improving life welfare i mean in this in this uh, context of law so it's supposed to be sustainable and to to push forward the sustainability we have to know all the ecosystem of each uh, object and uh, 
that's the bigger context of the uh, law that's been implemented in Indonesia for the last uh, three years on uh, advancement of culture and on how the state works to help or not to help, to facilitate uh, communities, public, in advancing their own culture. Okay, now I want to talk about the context of the last 10 months we live in the world, the pandemic. How this thing, the advancement of culture can, can, can be done in, in the context of the pandemic society at the moment or maybe post-pandemic society after this. Uh, just for the background information, since March 2020, almost 300 museums throughout Indonesia have stopped operating because of the social distancing policy, uh, policy. More than 400 heritage sites in the form of forts, old tomb complexes, caves, temples, pagodas, colonial buildings are also not open for public. Hundreds of art performance shows were cancelled, dozens of musical concerts were cancelled, hundreds of art spaces stopped operating, 1100 cinema screens are also closed around Indonesia. All the physical spaces where arts and culture meets now in the idle positions. Uh, mungkin Bowo and uh, all the participants coming from uh, Jatiwangi can share after this can share how how the condition in Jatiwangi for the last eight months it's been closing and no actual uh, space used in the in the context of uh, physical space. On June, the Ministry of Education and Culture released a joint decree with the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy on technical guidelines for coronavirus disease prevention and control in the field of culture and creative economy back in June. That's a joint communique, a joint decree, that this joint decree has been given a generic protocol on how public theaters, cinemas, performance hall, and also museums can operate in pandemic situations. But the joint decree can only implement it if the social distancing policies are lowered in local situation in this facility. Uh, unlike in Europe, as here in Indonesia, up till now, in October, almost all the locations that those facilities uh, are there are in the red zone. So actually, this joint communique cannot work. Through the month of May until now, the Ministry of Education and Culture also provided government assistance in the form of cash aid fund for more than 10,000 artists, artisans, and cultural workers through the, we have this, uh, the, the ministry have this program called APD, the Apresiasi Pelaku Budaya, is the cash aid, cash aid fund, a small aid fund, to help all the artists and the artisans. The, this assistance will continue to grow towards the figure of 49 to 50,000 artists, artists and cultural workers by the end of 2020. Uh, in this program, this, this is the unique one. In this program, every artist, artist and cultural worker is asked by the government to express their opinion in response to the pandemic situation in the form of songs, poems, stories, pictures, photos, paintings, and various other artistic expressions. That's why we have this a compilation of uh, very contemporary works that, that record the situation of pandemic here in Indonesia in the asset, in artistic way. The ministry also helps groups of artists to turn performances, seminar, discussion, exhibition into hundreds of online exhibitions, virtual conferences, online shows, and various other forms of virtual experimentation through YouTube channel, through 
uh, Instagram through all the and what we do at the moment, the the conferences uh, uh, done by Zoom, and also using the TVRI, the TV National Television of Indonesia, as part of the uh, as part that can be used by the artists and artisans to 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 present their works. Throughout May and July, the ADN, the Association of Documentary Filmmakers in Indonesia, were side by side by the with the government of the with the Ministry of uh, Education and Culture in recording changes in the cultural activities in Indonesia. The program called Rekam Pandemi. Uh, the recordings now is reached hundreds of hours of footage is now the our capital for later analysis and on how people in Indonesia resilience in facing the pandemic this is interesting later in the 31st of October uh, here in Indonesia we will start our biggest annual cultural event uh, Pekan Kebudayaan Nasional uh, the National Cultural Week Last year, this event was attended by almost 1 million spectators for a week event in one concentrated complex in Jakarta. Of course, we cannot do that now. So this year, uh, they changed the model. They transformed it into an online event of 27 serial conferences, 93 performing arts and musical concert shows, 1,477 visual arts in five online exhibitions, and 16 online workshops. Uh, it stated that uh, 4,791 artists and artisans will be involved. So it's a big event. It will be done in a week and using online based uh, presentation scheme for us in indonesia the pekan kebudayaan nasional the national cultural week next three weeks will be the indonesian model on how to transform big art event into online activities this is the question that i want to uh, give to the floor of this discussion tonight in the long run we have to work i think we have to find and to work together to redefine cultural activities and cultural economy in the context of post-pandemic world we have seen the world is changing consuming behavior is changing human habits are changing cultural rights are also changing we have to transform arts and culture, business model, and business process into a new normal context. Well, we can disagree what is new normal, but we have a new context. We have to, it cannot be done by one stakeholder. It cannot be done by one government. We have to work communally with all the arts and culture stakeholders in mapping the new horizon in mapping also the new ecosystem. If for the last what for the last five to ten months, the digital world the digital world of internet is the big bone for us for presenting the arts for presenting the cultural activities. So we have to identify and interconnect all the factors to create sustainable ecosystem of arts and culture not only in Jatiwangi, not only in Indonesia, not only in Europe, but in the world, because the post-pandemic world is world. I think that's my presentation for uh, this afternoon. I can give back to Prabowo. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mas Alex. <coughs> Yeah, just now we uh, 
hear uh, presentation from Mas Alex. Uh, maybe everyone wants to ask him. Uh, but first, uh, maybe Gingis will explain about the the pandemic in here in Jatiwangi. How the situation about the physical distancing uh, from Alex uh, the presentation. Ya, yeah, maybe Pak Ginggi will talk about the situation from the pandemic now in Jatiwangi, Pak. Uh, Ika translate, ya. Yeah. Di Jatiwangi baik-baik saja. Uh, di Majalengka dan sebagainya juga baik-baik saja. Ada beberapa peningkatan di beberapa daerah eh, yang positif hip, eh, positif COVID, tetapi saya kira memang eh, apa namanya eh, ya alhamdulillah mereka sehat-sehat walaupun dinyatakan positif. Uh, selama ini yang meninggal itu ada empat di, di Majalika semasa pandemi ini. Itu pun juga memang disinyalir sudah apa namanya memang mengalami komplikasi dari awal. Jadi secara secara kehidupan sehari-hari memang sebenarnya tidak begitu berpengaruh ya kecuali kami memang dilarang pergi dilarang berkumpul dilarang hajatan dilarang uh, membuat keramaian dan sebagainya uh, kalau di luar itu memang kami seperti masyarakat yang yang apa ya yang katanya dan katanya oh katanya covidnya banyak katanya banyak orang mati katanya 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 kayak gitu mas bobo oke okay, thank you pak ginggi ika maybe can udah dicacah caption tulisnya oke okay. Yes, I'm translating in CC caption. If you so now is the discussion session and the question. So in the chat box have some question from from Neil. Is yeah, the question? Thank you. Should I stop with my question? Yeah, yeah. Can can can. Just first want to say thank you. I think it's so great, Alex that even in the evening you are talking to us about those subjects. This is uh, simply also great for us that a person from a ministry from such a, let's say, broadly thinking state, a great nation, is sharing his thoughts with us. Just thank you for that. Um, um, for me, it's uh, really difficult to imagine. We have, of course, gratefully Otto here. Otto is, has been traveling to your country and he has been explaining us a lot and we have learned that you deal with a country and a nation which is very widely spread where you have many cultures many cultures and even many religions uh, i think we have really to know that because we have two or three religions here in switzerland uh, but they are small rather small groups and for us uh, we have to it's difficult a bit to imagine, but it was by your presentation, we understand what kind of great effort you do uh, by also focusing on interrelating cultures and not yes. defining one single culture, which has been, let's say, a great error in Germany, for example, to have only one culture. And my question is uh, rather, let's say, uh, abstract, but uh, I had the feeling in one of the first slides you were focusing on processes like languages, like dance, which are processes with our actions and which are not somehow works like a painting 
for a piece of stone. And yes. then I thought uh, I would like to elaborate, ask you to elaborate a bit on this. What does it mean when you have a cultural policy which is not so much on artifacts which have a value which can be sold, or but when you have a culture which is living lived through action even by grandmas and grandpas. Yes, to this to I'm sorry I couldn't understand the second question. You can help me more. Second question is uh, yeah would you elaborate a bit what it does mean for you to yeah. develop yeah. a cultural theory which is not object bound objects can you you can sell them in a capital capitalistic way but is more on processes which gives value also to grandfathers and grandmothers okay like okay uh first about the processes okay actually we know that the in the object of culture consists of two the tangible objects and the intangible objects so when you talk about the processes, I think it's more to the intangible objects. The intangible objects are, are supposed to be uh, treated in a different, in a different, different way from the from the tangible uh, objects, because uh, like this, uh, when we say uh the value of working together in indonesia we have this special value called uh called uh gotong royong it's gotong royong is the habits of working together hand in hand inside the local communities in working all the or creating the system or creating infrastructure for each member of the local communities. Uh, how to capitalize it? That's that's the okay, that's the big question on how to capitalize that kind of process or that kind of values uh, in the term of economy. That's why the aim, the utilization of uh, advancement of culture the aim is not only one not only the the economy not only the in, in my presentation before there's four of uh, four aim of the utilization one is improving general welfare that's the economy and the happiness increasing the active role of influence of Indonesian international organizations that's about the relationship and uh, contributing to the to the world, improving cultural resilience and building national identity. So for that kind of uh, specific values to be utilized, maybe not not having this uh, capital 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 uh, point of view or perspective, capitalist point of view or perspective, but rather than uh, it's more than more to more than more to utilize it for the uh, capacity building of the nation or for the uh, for the improving culture of the series the the ability to protect itself uh, the ability to take care to each other the ability to improve from one context to another context to another age of the of the living culture i think that's more proper uh, way to explain how to utilize this kind of values or this kind of processes in if you refer to the dance we said before dance mm -hmm. is more than a, uh, is more to process rather than rather than an object i agree with you uh, how to utilize dance? Of course, we can dance. We cannot see it uh, just like other objects. We cannot see it that the one dance is uh, standalone objects. 
that's why we have to uh, see it as part of one big ecosystem when the dance is uh, will be presented why what is the symbolization of the dance uh, when people are gonna need it when people are gonna use it because many of dance that based on traditional knowledge and traditional uh, rights in Indonesia is actually parts of other bigger rights or, or other bigger rituals that mean something mm -hmm. for healthy for uh, Im body immunity and uh, many other uh, many other aim to do it so uh, we cannot when we want to break down each uh, each uh, parts of the the advancement of culture concept. I think we need uh, to see it in more particular and by examples. For what example? Because there's no generic, uh, there's no generic uh, receipt for all the the cultures that very much happen in, in Indonesia at the moment. Thank you. I hope I have answered your question, Mr. Roller. Thank you. Okay, Hello, thank you. Tanya, Mas Bo. Ya, ya. Selamat. Uh, nanti di bisa diterjemahin sama Ika ya. Uh, Mas Alek mau tanya. Siap. Kalau dalam uh, perspektif apa namanya undang-undang uh, kebudayaan soal mamanya apa namanya ekonomi gitu, apakah sudah ada tolak ukur baru dalam sudut pandang kebudayaan soal peningkatan ekonomi gitu? Karena memang kalau dilihat dari apa namanya kondisi sosial budaya di kita kan banyak yang intangible tuh Mas Alex ya. hmm. uh, dan itu juga apa namanya uh, merupakan sebuah kesejahteraan tersendiri gitu ini apakah apakah sudah ada tolak ukur baru kemajuan ekonomi gitu uh, apa namanya peningkatan kesejahteraan menurut versi kebudayaan? Oke, okay. okay, the question is is there any uh, any new method to 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 count or to is there new new way to indicate how culture is impact have impact on economy or the GDP of the nation. Okay, for that kind of question, back in 2018, uh, the Minister of Plan, uh, State Planning, the Minister of State Planning and the Minister of uh, Education and Culture uh, creating this new index called index pembangunan kebudayaan or the cultural development index is based on what uh, the UN use I uh, forget the name of the index but actually it counts on how develop each part of Indonesia in advancing its culture in the matter of how impact how eco how economic impact in the local in the local government or local uh, local area how uh, happy or how uh, safe uh, one local area to for its uh, community that live there to express their uh, freedom of speech and the freedom of artistic uh, expressions, and, 
and the index also count about how well the literacy going because the interconnection between culture and interconnection between uh, uh, countries can be managed if it can be much more uh, used to develop its uh, culture if uh, the state of literacy is quite high in its area. The index only used once in 2020 for the uh, five years planning of Indonesia uh, government. And it can also, uh, it will uh, count it every year annually by the the National Statistics Bureau. Uh, maybe you can browse the 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 name of the name of uh, the index. It's uh, I I put it here in the chat box. Index. Okay, maybe we, uh, if you have time and you can browse, you can browse for this index because it's quite interesting for uh, must be for you also. Mas, siap. Uh, another question from Dominic, Law and yes. Articles. Who wrote them? How were they developed? And who was involved? When? Uh, which one? Which the? The check, the check box, mas. Law and Articles. Who wrote them? How were they developed? Who was involved? We can oh. come in, uh, Bravo. Yeah, of can. course, of course. Thank you, thank you for this uh, very informative, informative and excellent talk. It's very interesting to see, um, especially how inclusive and process oriented uh, the the management of cultures is laid out, and um, how the interrelations. I think, if I understood correct, the interrelations are between the various traditions and cultures. So this means also that there you provide and facilitate overlappings of traditional cultures and fine arts, all the different of all tra different traditions of artistic expression. And I was wondering the articles and um, uh, the law that you mentioned. Yep. Who was part of designing the law? Who? How did it come about? What was the process of establishing the law and the articles? Okay, the, this particular law has a very long history. It's, it needs 30 years to finalize, unlike other, any other law in Indonesia. Uh, for the last, the, the, funny, the funny thing is, from before the, the draft, the, so there is only all, almost 15 drafts of it before this final version. And for the last, not the last one, but before that and before that, uh, actually my, my at that moment I'm not part of the government, at the moment I'm the, uh, have a quite uh, works in uh, Advocacy, policy advocacy, or uh, actually in in uh, in art scene in Indonesia, uh, we hate that that draft. The draft is so old perspective, perspective not progressive, and quite uh, not 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 pushing the 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 inclusiveness of the Indonesian society. That's why before, that's, that's one of the things that made this uh, law 
quite have a long journey because every time they have new draft and people don't like it every time they have new drive uh, new 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 draft the the parliament doesn't like it and everything so in 2016 the whole year of 2016 we changed the 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 very concept of the law the stakeholders and of course uh, the law written by formally written by the parliament but parliament is quite open to talk with the executives the government and to talk all the almost all the stakeholders through the government so at the whole year 2016 the government talks to almost all the stakeholders of the the cultural uh, scene in indonesia from artists artisans academics almost every uh, professional uh, professional associations and of course uh, universities uh, to create this inclusive perspective and progressive uh, progressive approach on how developing and pushing our diversity as part of the uh, modern world uh, maybe that's how i can describe what happened but 2016 is quite amazing when we pushing this agenda together between the parliament the stakeholders and the, the government Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Mas. Hey. Dari from XTY. And Jab involved also about that. <laughs> yeah, Jab also involved in the in the process yeah. of creating this uh, law. Uh, this question from XTY, Miss XTY. Yes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> Talking about laws and culture in the community because there are many demonstrations at this moment in your region and country. Does the omnibus article affect the management of culture at the moment? Okay, uh, in the chapter seven in omnibus law, the, the at the moment is quite burning in Indonesia. Uh, the omnibus law doesn't affect anything or any articles in the omnibus law doesn't affect anything that happened in the law of uh, advancement of culture so we're safe what not safe is the environment because the article of the the chapter on environment is quite changing the law of environment i think that's what happened if I'm sorry, I cannot talk to you about the details of the article because it's a thousand page long. So, I, and I don't think we have that also in English, but I can ha happily send it to you if you need. Or maybe for all the participants, do you need the law on advancement on culture in English? I can share it with you. Yes, please. That would be fantastic. Oh, okay. Next. Eh, have I answered your question, Miss XCY? Mm, I was just wondering okay. because of the demonstrations and everything yeah. that's going on with the environment and yeah. because we're all working, you're all working like communal way, also intertwined with your environment directly if it doesn't affect you in any way. And also because you work with a lot of students and a lot of schools and the demonstrations are mostly about the students and everything. So I was just wondering about the impact. Of course, it will be impacted. If you uh, ask in the broader sense, of course it will be impacted. Uh, but I don't know what, what kind of impact or what kind of the future impact of this what happening here in Indonesia at the moment because it's heavily uh, heavily against by the students heavily against by the uh, 
workers uh, union especially in the chapter of workers union but uh, what we are quite concerned is in the chapter of environment because it affects to the to the culture it, it must be affected to the culture Mas Bowo, ada lagi? Oke. Okay. Maybe Mas Art. Okay. Uh, thank you Alex for your availability after uh, Mas uh, Farid uh, could not come and you could take time for us. It's also nice to see for us an other part of art production where art production happens. So I think it's nice to see that to see it from that angle. So it's good to to explain these kind of things. Uh, adding to the question of Christy, I was imagining not that you need to answer, but I was imagining you show this uh, diagraph where culture taps into other offices of the government. Yep. So it would be funny to see the uh, office responsible for what causes now if they are entangled with other things as well. But that's a side question I had. Oh, that's a question uh, pop up after uh, answering Christy and thinking about the question of Christy. I think I have two questions or uh, things, uh, one concrete and one abstract. Uh, yep. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's time because I thought I was the first to respond. So I wanted to postpone one question, but it's good to do. It. So first, no, the second question I have Maybe we don't touch upon that, but which is uh, interesting is I had that idea or that sentence in my mind of the responsibility to protect culture. It's a nice topic to talk about and culture is never fixed. So there's always development yep. in how to deal with that. But maybe later, I think in the context of this situation where we are all art producers kind of say and i think you're also a maker no you are you are not a politician and not only organizer no. but you make films as well if i remember yes correctly. i'm not a politician yeah and i think that's the thing that i wanted to discuss or i'm interested in to share here but yeah. i think we met once in 2004 if you were you were organizing confident at that time oh yeah hi again <laughs> no worries uh I think as a maker, it's also good to uh, share uh, how it is as a maker to join or the Art Council, Jakarta Art Council, or to join the Ministry of Culture. How, how uh, I have to ask it properly. Um, how do you behave as an artist uh, or a maker <laughs> within the ministry? Can you share okay. some, some yeah, experiences with us? Okay, it's just like, what what you say You're selling your soul to the devil right no okay. no no i think that's that's the nice thing about that we are involved now in this context with indonesian practice or practice of some indonesian uh, practitioners uh that is not always oppositional that you always can yeah. work with somebody together even if you don't like it or uh, just to test to understand to see maybe by coincidence okay me myself have the very big uh Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm a film producer. I'm a film director as a person, and I work with a lot of organization. And with that many organization, uh, at the moment I'm working with the uh, Indonesian Film Council, the BPI, Badan Perfilman Indonesia, the Indonesian Film Council. I worked before with the. Uh, Jakarta Arts Council uh, and what I've been working for the last like, 10 years is policy advocacy because not many not many person or not many uh, organization in Indonesia uh, doing that one bloody thing the policy advocacy many of Indonesian artists or stakeholders of arts and culture doesn't understand the the how strategies how strategic 
laws are. And many of the lawmakers doesn't understand how the culture works or how the art works. So, and as part of the uh, new, not new, as part of the generation that changed, uh, that's coming, changing from the new order era of Indonesia to the reformation process, reformation, reformasi uh, era, we, we work side by side to, to, to implement better and better uh, atmosphere and including sup, uh, basic superstructure like laws. And it's not many of us doing it. That's why I'm, I, I like it. Uh, I have the quite interest in it. That's why I've been working, what, for the five years, for the last five years with the Ministry of Culture Ministry of Education and Culture to help creating better and better policies. Before I worked with the government of Jakarta to creating better and better art, art oriented policies in Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. Uh, without, without this kind of, how to say, bridge. Without this kind of bridge, without this kind of uh, uh, lobbying process inside and outside the, outside the government, we cannot achieve uh, better policy. And the government itself, the lack of uh, sources to have uh, real data, real, uh, real pragmatic. Uh, details on what happened in the on the ground they need that the government need that from us need that the need that details to understand the the whole the whole uh, the whole panorama but we also need the as the as the maker as the part of the stakeholder we also need better and better environment that's why Maybe we can go uh, head to head against the government, but in the context of Indonesia, that doesn't give us anything good. We have to create a kind of unique uh, relationship with the government to push better and better uh, policies. That's the background story. I know. Yeah, and I, I do agree, you need to walk hand by hand by policymaking and the government. And I think also in, in uh, Switzerland or in the Netherlands or in Belgium, it's the case. Uh, and uh, I was also wondering if you can share uh, uh, how you deal with being in a kind of formal situation. How do you, do you prepare yourself? Or I mean, you have another kind of body maybe and you go into the kind of governmental uh, talks, do you prepare or, or is it just a normal act for you? Or can you share with us, let, let's imagine that we all are a part of the cultural uh, uh, administration. We sit there with other kind of bodies. Do you have some uh, experiences that you can share how we can be there in that, in that meeting? I don't know. The condition in Indonesia is quite fluid. Actually, we can, I, uh, in many government bodies, it's usually it's very formal uh, in bureaucratic meetings and everything. But here in Indonesia, in the context of culture, many of the government bodies is quite fluid on accepting other uh, perspectives. So it's not that hard. Actually, what is hard is how to listen to them in their bureaucratic language. That's the hardest part. Yeah, bureaucratic language is an alien language, right? Yeah, I know. Even in Switzerland, in Netherlands, or everywhere else in the world, bureaucratic language is an alien language. That's that's you need time to 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 understand and to translate it into our native language as the language of expression of arts and culture. But 
if we understand how to translate it, we can create better and better policies. How to make uh, the member of the parliament, the senators, that's, of course, they have the political uh, uh, aim for everything, but they also need uh, our votes, right? We have to talk with their language and how to translate our language there in the that can be that way that can be implemented in the, in part of uh, their political uh, aim. But I think not all political aim are bad. We can slice it one by one. Not all bureaucratic language are bad. It's just confusing. But it's very confusing. Uh, uh, but in time, I think even me, myself, I think I need more people that working like what Jeff, maybe after this, Mas Gingi or Mas Bowo can also, or Ika can also tell us how in the last 10 years, how Jeff, Jakarta Jatiwangi Art Factory, that used to be the enemy of the local government, is now the very best friend of local government because of them. Because of Arif Yudi, Prabowo, and Gingi trying to talk also with their language. Because for 30 years, culture and arts has been disbanded by the government in the new era, the new order era. And this time, we have to learn each other language from zero. And that's what Jeff been doing in Majalengka for the last 10 years. And it's working. It's very working. I I remember what around ten years ago that even the local government of Bajalenka doesn't know what Jav is. And now they're creating policies because of Jav. I think it's the process. I don't know how to tell it to you, but it's it's quite. Thank you. I would like to come yeah. in again with a remark. I find it highly impressive. Reinhardt has been mentioning that we also have a policy advocacy in Switzerland, Netherlands, but what I hear um, due to our monocultures, it's uh, and the segregation of different disciplines. Um, I think it's far from what you've been describing as a uh, uh, an inclusive approach of bringing a lot of different traditions together. Actually, uh, what you've been describing is sort of what is also happening on global levels now. So you are very well equipped in uh, taking a place within the global world. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Are, you are so experienced in bringing together a lot of different views and stakeholders' opinion. So I would like to ask you, so you have a lot of expertise, how to bring together these different stakeholders. And the example you gave now with uh, Chaf, so through talking, connecting, trying to find ways to be, uh, to talk in similar languages, uh, this can be established. So you're, uh, do you have some how to, like different stakeholders, different views, you would like to bring them together by keeping it diverse. Some yes. recommendations. What, where does one start? What are obstacles? How to deal with it? I think what, from my experiences, I think when we trying to build a bridge between two or three or four or more uh, uh, groups of uh, groups of people that have a different background not we're not starting with the differences we always start with the what we aim together so the the future aim 
is always the starting point. When we state what we need to achieve together, and then after that, we talk about strategies. We talk about our differences. Okay, to, to reach that aim, to reach that goal, I have this, what you have, what can we do together with what you have and what I have. That kind of approach always works in Indonesia. Start from the young, uh, the, the far aim, the, the, the dreams, the, the goals, the, the big goals. Uh, of course, it's not easy. Obstacles are there and everywhere. Uh, but even Indonesia is the is it, even Indonesia made by that kind of method. We're not a republic that create based on single community. We are the republic that created back then by the same dream. One nation, one language, one culture. But what makes us uh, what makes us Indonesia is because of the dream of becoming Indonesia. That's why Indonesia are always becoming. There's no state of well Indonesia. It's, uh, it's a dream. Indonesia itself is a dream. We're trying to achieve Indonesia. That's how we, uh, that's the method that we, what we've been doing here in Indonesia and Islam. That's maybe over generation, over generative, but that's how we do it here. Thank you. Mas Art. Yeah. Sure. Um, I wanted to continue on Dominic, and I think uh, it's always easier to look at a other country or far away and to uh, uh, appreciate things and think like, how can we do it here? Or why can we not do it here? I think if we would talk to people not from Java, we would maybe have other answers. Yes. Uh, because Java is only one of the many islands and there's different contexts and wishes to be part of the whole or be part of a different part. Um, and I think one important thing is reading. And Alex mentioned the new order and this government. And I think it's uh, also comes in logical that Alex is now uh, connected to the government because the new order ended around 99, end of the dictature. And then a lot of organizations started to organize and to build. So a lot of these generation are involved in a government policy, whether local or uh, national. Yeah. So that's a natural kind of thing, I assume. And second, uh, the current government uh, of Jokowi came into being in hmm, 2015 around, 14? 2000, 2014. Yeah, 14. And actually for us cultural people, it's the first government that also represent us. So it's finally a kind of so-called uh, uh, party that or represents that that can represent us. Jokowi was before um, a mayor of uh, Jakarta, which is the biggest city in uh, Indonesia. Uh, on the one hand, a lot of cultural people supported Jokowi, but on the other hand, the next step for these cultural people was to influence Jokowi, just not let him be the president, but to push him further because that was a kind of need. So I think that's, and Hilmar Farid was part of that movement, as I think as well. I'm not sure, I, I don't know him personally and also not his track record. Uh, but that's why a lot of people are, like Alex are uh, in these situations at this moment of time. And I think I'm not good enough at it. So I will uh, say that as well. I think we have to learn to understand what our contexts are and to know where we can tap into. So in, in the case of Switzerland or Netherlands, is understand where we can tap into as, as artists. Maybe we don't need to tap into the cultural ministry, but maybe we need to tap into the tourist, in, uh, tourist something, economy uh, government or in a local government, but we need to be better prepared to read our situation, to be able to influence or to try 
at least uh, positions. I think that's uh, an important, we can look at the other side, but actually we, we need to be encouraged to read our own context to be able to act uh, in there. That's what I wanted to uh, answer, or I had the urge to answer that, Dominic. And Niels has Thank a, you. or Niels wants to ask, or Alex, I don't Renard. know. Thank you, Renard, that's quite good reading on, on us, <laughs> but, Actually, actually, that's the the answer. How I how I'm as a as an artist. I'm as a as a part of the the cultural uh, stakeholder is working together hand in hand at the moment with the government. Just because we have this process and the context of changing the government in time from 2000 up to now, so we put we. We put many of us inside the government uh, officials uh, offices to influence, to give a perspective, to to help to create better and better uh, environment. But I think that's the that's the, the perspective, Miss Mr. Ruler. Seeing that we uh, are approaching four o'clock, it's rather late for us. I would like to return to the beginning of your talk, Alex. And again, many yeah. thanks for sharing insight. I had at the beginning as a kind of preamble to your to your to, to your the reflection to the production of the law. There was a distinction between the law concerning Indonesia and the world, and I found this very interesting. And first, I think it would be a great gift for the world, for us, if we are going to discuss worldwide laws that have to deal, have the goal and the aim of happiness. I think it's very interesting to have this. Um, we work with dignity in Germany, the dignity of the human, but I think in connection with happiness, it would become much more interesting. Now, my question. It is a bit critical, Alex, excuse me, but you yep. mentioned also the fact in later in your slideshow that um, uh, Indonesian culture, one aim is to influence worldwide. Um, is influence to be taken as export of Indonesian cultures versus Japan versus the world or what does this word influence okay. mean? Because the base of the law, because of the base of the thoughts of the advancement of culture, telling us that uh, culture is a dynamic thing, it always grows, it always uh, interacts with each other. Of course, we cannot see Indonesia as the one solitude thing in the world. It's supposed to be part of the bigger communities, the world community. That's why when we're talking about our national identity, our local values, we also have to contribute to the world as part of the world society. I think that's the idea. Contribute. Maybe when the, in the capitalist, or not maybe, in, in a specific area of uh, exporting goods, of course, we influence uh, international, in international perspective. Uh, when we're talking about uh, spreading our traditional values that can work with uh, the world, that's part of it. When we're performing our artists around the world, is part of influencing. So the big idea is how to contribute as the member of the world community. Indonesia cannot work alone. That's what we do. Oh, yeah. Abubu, do you see this? There's a new post from Christina Christie. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Anyone want to question? I'll send 
Wait a minute, I'll send you the law. Oh. Or maybe it's better after this, I'll give the presentation and the law in. Oh, no, no. Okay. Yes, please. And I would be interested in the omnibus law as well. Is it in digital form, this 1,000 pages? Yes, but in Indonesian That's language okay. at the moment. That's, That's okay. okay. I'd like a translator. Okay. We okay. have a course on translating every morning. We will do it next. Uh, <laughs> just wait a minute. Okay. Reinhard is doing yoga. Okay. I have another question. Yeah, please. Um, so how would you want to establish uh, the international relationship uh, with either governments or artists or academies? Is there a strategy or uh, a platform or format to establish these relationships? Okay. About foreign, of course, Indonesia as a government, Indonesia as a republic have the, its own uh, foreign policy uh, framework that includes cultural perspective. It, it's done and worked by, uh, it's being uh, delivered by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But in a stakeholder level, the cooperation between art spaces, the cooperation between uh, academies or universities around the world about culture, about artist works, about uh, like this, the cooperation between the collaborative works between the Zurich University, the uh, JAF and other member in this, uh, in this, uh, in initiative is part of that uh, building relationship. So it's something organic, it's something can be done not only institutionally, but also artist by artist, organization by organization. What the law, what the law number uh, five, 2017 said that in establishing this, those kind of relationship, organic relationships between Indonesian artists and foreign artists, between Indonesian organization to international organization, between Indonesian university to other university elsewhere in the world, is supposed to be facilitated by the government as part of the cultural works. That's the position. So it's a slow, slow process. Oh, it's yeah, a very slow process. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for your yeah. answer. Pagi ini ada yang mau ditanya lagi? Mas Arif. Christie's answer comment from. Uh, Mas Alex. Was this answered? Mm -hmm. the, the last one? The Take act off. of this. Yeah. Disturbing. Oh, ini. The act of disturbing yeah. onto revealing the society is the work of the artist itself. In this way, the outcome of our work and artist should produce is less important. It's what the impact, the connection, and the interface of society can grow in my mind and be true work. Agree? Agree, Miss XTY. <laughs> it's abstract, but I agree. Yeah.
Can we say something from our room here? Of course. It's, uh, I think we have a very concentrated atmosphere. People enjoyed it very much, Alex, just to give you this from this moment on. Um, and thank you again. Just from I'm sending, here. Okay. Just from I'm sending the law on the chat box, please. Yeah, okay. If you need to download, please. Thank you. Yeah. And maybe also your presentation, if this is possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send it to you also. Okay. I have it. I'll send it to you. Okay. You have it. Maria has it. Is here from the audience in the room something? I do not see anybody. Bernadette? No, you don't have. No. Okay. Here from Prabovo, here from the room. Hmm. Yeah. Problems to understand. Right up to voice. I had problems before with the audio. I think it was with the different stakeholders. Uh, um, probably you answered this already, but for me it would be interesting how do you talk to the government? Of course, now you're yourself also into it, but. Uh, with this different interest group is if one group wants to go more for the economic uh, purposes and the other group wants to go more for the happy life, what Jatiwani uh, uh, Art Factory is asking for also going for and like with this different kind of goals. Um, yeah, can you explain the process okay. of Okay, uh, that's two perspectives that usually get head to head to each other, right? The, the needs to get what? Uh, happiness and the needs to get welfare. Those two is used to against each other. That's what we always think or always try to reach that it's supposed to not against each other like this. If we're talking about the sustainable, uh, even the law itself, it's supposed, uh, the, the law of advancement of culture is, push, is pushing to have a sustainable ecosystem for its objects. That kind of thing, the sustainable ecosystem is the, the aim to get the sustainable ecosystem, we need not only to reach the welfare, but we also need to get uh, happiness inside inside the, the process. So the, the problem is usually is to translate, is to translate the happiness as the important part of the uh, economic perspective, because without this happiness, without this freedom of expression, without this uh, sustainable resources, we cannot achieve growth that we need. We cannot create it uh, against each other. It's supposed to be steps that we need to do side by side. We cannot reach capital, the big capital, without sustainable ecosystem. And without sustainable ecosystem, of course, we cannot reach happiness. I think the, the main ingredients is how to translate the needs of uh, the needs of creating sustainable ecosystem into parts of reaching uh, economic perspective. Is, is it, am I answering you, Ms. Cobell, or no? Huh? Into the, 
to the other interest groups. Yes. yes. How I to have. infuse it? Actually, how to infuse it to each other? Because actually, if we have in this uh, perspective, advancement of culture. Of uh, we cannot we cannot have uh, the short term perspective of economic way. We cannot. We have to invest so much to create a sustainable environment, sustainable ecosystem, so we can prolong the economic perspective. We cannot stay short sighted. That's that's the main part of it. Oh, am I making you more dizzy now, Ms. Cobell? Sorry, then you should come here and talk to many companies who think only in short terms. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, 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 can, can. Um, thank you very much for this answer. It was very enriching, this perspective. I still have a question to the economy. Um, because I think during that live, I understood it correctly, but maybe I'm also a bit wrong as I also had some sound issues to understand it. There is like, whenever you're exporting those cultural goods or whatever, then there is some part of like how to finance it that then some money has to be paid to the Institute and then you use that money again for like the development of the art or could you maybe elaborate more on this part and how this was meant? Or... Okay. Did I completely misunderstand? Okay. Some... Okay. Maybe I can I can work it out from example. Uh, I'm wearing batik. Okay, as part of the. Uh, this is batik, batik. Uh, as part of the uh, object of the uh, advancement of culture, right? Batik as a, as a garment, batik as a part of the lifestyle. So when we, uh, if the major industry and create, uh, exporting many of batik uh, garments, around the world and creating much capital the law said that it's supposed to give back <clears throat> to the ecosystem of batik to create better better groundworks to prolong the sustainability of the batik production and batik expression in indonesia so when we're thinking about exporting batik, we supposed to be, we supposed to also map, have uh, analyzing the mapping of uh, who's creating it, who's making it. Is there any school that that study batik? Is there any school that teaches batik? Is there how many students are there? Is it enough for the next 20 years how about the wax that used in the process of creating batik is the wax coming from indonesia is the wax coming from other parts of indonesia is coming is the wax imported from foreign countries if it's so okay what we can do to create it sustainable from indonesia uh, we also think about the color the paint of batik is it made in Indonesia? Is it coming from India? Is it coming from China? How about the garments, the fabric, I mean? How about the fabric? Is it the fabric coming from the plantation in uh, the eastern part of Indonesia? Is, it, is the fabric coming from China? Is the fabric coming from Vietnam or even from Germany? The interconnection when we have the map of each objects, so we can see how the value and how the money uh, circling 
around each object. And we can see which part that needed most to create better ecosystem. We need to invest on that weak part or weak post. Okay, thank in you very much. order to creating more utilization in the future. Am I making it clear or making you more blurry? No, no, it sounds very, I just have like one little question. So the money is then paid by um, Indonesian companies that use the good to export it somewhere else, or is it more from international companies that use the goods? Both. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Roller, no? No, just thank you for answering so, so carefully the questions also of Jana and of Bernadette. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Maybe Pagingi want to uh, round up this uh, full week of talks maybe you have some last words to, to tell us let's go <laughs> okay, thank you everyone thank you dominic thank you Zurich art university pop blogs uh thank you mas art thank you mas alec uh yeah terima kasih Saya kira uh, satu minggu ini kita banyak apa namanya banyak sekali kebingungan saya kira uh, tetapi saya pikir bahwa apa namanya kebingungan-kebingungan kita juga itu merupakan sebuah apa namanya sebuah atmosfer yang yang menarik saya kira terima kasih Harusnya kita bertemu secara secara fisik, tetapi tentunya karena COVID dan sebagainya, kita cuma bisa bertemu di layar datar. Dan saya kira eh, saya sebenarnya juga tidak percaya dengan <laughs> COVID. Dan di Jatiwangi ini COVID-nya juga KW2. Jangan khawatir, tetap sehat semuanya. Uh, ya, satu lagi pertanyaan buat Mas Alex sebenarnya. Apakah Undang-Undang Kebudayaan terpengaruh sama Omnibus Law, Mas Alex? Uh, actually, Mas Genggi, the question have answered before. I think XTY also asked the same thing. That's uh, this the omnibus law is impacted will will impacted the law of advancement of culture in the in the section of uh, education and culture inside in the chapter of education and culture inside the omnibus law doesn't reach anything to the law of five uh, law of advancement of culture so actually legally it's not there uh, the impact but i think in the long run it will impact the ground it will impact the the real ecosystem of the of the culture because the omnibus law is quite harsh to the environment perspective jadi mending kita ya i'm sorry okay Semuanya terima kasih, mohon maaf lahir batin, uh, mungkin bisa ditambahin sama teman-teman lain, jika mangga di translate. Oke, okay. uh, <laughs> translate udah ada di bawah pak, udah ada ada translate-nya. So we take photo together, oke? Okay? Ika will take the photo before we close. <laughs> Hey, Kak. Ayo, Kak. Yeah, finally we have photo. <laughs> okay, one, two, three. Smile. Mas Alex, smile. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Thank you everyone. Good. Thank good you so much. Good night here from here. <laughs> Thank you everyone. Good evening. Next week. Thank you Mas Art. Thank, Thank you Dominic. You Thank you Neil. Yeah. Thank, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Yeah. Where is Anna Mary? <laughs> she said goodbye and in the chat and she left. <laughs> Thank you Dominic. Bye bye. Oh, oh. Atur, atur, nuhun.